It might surprise you to learn that Itadaki Street is a big release. One of the biggest games on the Famicom in 1991. It's a beloved game that launched an entire genre. And I don't like it. Yep, sorry, I'm gonna be a bit mean to this beloved classic. Itadaki Street is a board game. And in this case, it's a take on Monopoly. Your goal in the game is to either earn a certain amount of money, or have the most amount of assets when the first person goes bankrupt. This first game in the series has the subtitle, Watashi no Omise ni Yotete, which can be loosely translated as, Come by my shop. Although it was developed by Game Studio, the game developer founded by Zevius creator Masunobu Endo, it was designed by Yuji Hori, because apparently creating two genre-defining games on the Famicom just wasn't enough for him. According to rumors, the game went from design concept to playable Famicom version in under two weeks. When you start Itadaki Street, you're given the option to watch a tutorial, and then you can set up the number of players. Itadaki Street has four maps, but the later two aren't accessible unless you win some games. After you select which map you're going to play on, you get to choose your opponents, and then it's time to play. On a player's turn, they roll a six-sided die, and then move around the board that many spaces. There are five kinds of tiles that you can land on. The most common of these will be the property tile. And what happens when you land on that depends on who owns it. If no one owns it, you can buy it outright. But if another player owns it, then you have to pay them rent. Now that's like Monopoly, but after you've paid the rent, you're given the option to purchase the tile yourself. You have to pay five times what the tile's worth to take it from them but that might be a good option for you depending on the situation. If you land on a tile that you control, then you can upgrade any property that you own. Obviously, doing that will increase the value of that tile, along with the rent due when somebody lands on it. The chance tiles are the next most common type. They're the ones with the question mark, and landing on one of those will let you pick out a tile from this board. Getting four or more in a row will give you some additional cash as well. The tiles can be pretty swingy. You get something that increases the value of all your tiles by 30%, or sends it down the same amount. You might be sent to any space on the board, or you could be forced to sell one of your properties. These totally random tiles will change the outcome of your game. In this match, for example, I kept getting hit by property value down tiles, while my opponent kept getting property value up tiles. This happened five or six times for each of us. The tile with the character for rest on it means that you won't collect rent on your properties until your next turn. Some maps have a casino tile, and when someone lands on that, all of the players can bet on a roulette wheel. And then there's the bank tile, the most important one. The starting point for your game, and where you have to return to after you've passed all of the icons on the board for the suits of cards. When you pass the bank after getting those four, then you get some cash. But what makes the bank really important is that when you land on it or pass it by, you can buy stock. And that's the real key to winning Itadaki Street. If you're passing by the bank, then you'd have to hit the B button while you're on that tile. The way that stocks work is that there are shares for every block of four properties. Owning enough shares in a block of properties entitles you to some of the income when a person pays rent to them. Not as much as the owner of the property, but some. Every time someone buys more than 10 shares, the price goes up a bit. And every time someone sells more than 10 shares, it goes back down. The price of stock is also increased by improving properties, and of course, random events. What makes stock really convenient is that you can sell it any time that you need it. So whenever your cash reserves dip below zero, you're given the option to sell shares to make up that loss. That means that shares are kind of better than cash. You can buy them, spend them at any time, and they might increase in value while you're holding them. Plus, you might get some income just from having them. The best strategy in the game is to not hold any cash at all, just get shares. Of course, if you've lost too much money and you don't have shares, then you have to sell off some of your property. And in that event, the bank auctions off whatever you sell to the other players. And if you're still in the red after all of your properties have been auctioned off, 
well then it's game over for everyone. If you need to stop and pick up the game later, it auto-saves to a battery backup after every turn. When you start playing again, it'll just ask you if you want to pick up where you left off. That's how Itadaki Street works, and obviously, there isn't a whole lot of room for strategy in this game. Once you've learned that stocks are the most important thing to have, you're pretty much locked down to the whims of the dice. There are very few options beyond what stock do you invest in. In this game, I concentrated all of my stock on what I owned, thinking that I'd improve my own properties and thus increase my share price, but I kept getting hit by downgrades, so I would have been better off if I spread myself out a lot. Generally speaking, stock prices are going to trend upward and be a major contributor to your final assets. As I mentioned, this is a really beloved game in Japan, and as such, it got a lot of sequels. They didn't make sequels especially often, but they've kept coming about one every four or five years. And there were a lot of games that basically did the same thing. Perhaps the best known of these in the US are the Cultocept games. It's come up a few times on Fami Daily, but I am not a big fan of board games whose outcome is essentially randomized. There has to be some deeper strategy behind the game for me to enjoy it, and that just doesn't exist in Itadaki Street. The best thing I can say about it is that by crunching the Monopoly formula down to a handful of squares, it speeds the game up considerably. But just because you can play a game in under an hour doesn't make it a better game.